Hello and welcome to Nap Hammer's Parental Projects. Uh, today we are looking at skin tones. Now with Parental Projects, our goal is not to win a golden demon, but to have a plethora of painting tools that are quick, that are easy, that are things that can be done if painting may not be your favorite aspect of the hobby, or if you have uh, limited time when you are doing painting. Uh, so today we are going to be looking at five different methods for painting different uh, tones of skin that you can use in all of your models. If you're like me, um, skin color is usually the hardest part for me to decide on, um, so I tend to uh, stick to these five different colors for most of my models just because they cover a wide range of skin tones and also a wide range of backgrounds. So. On that note, let's go ahead and get started. So, for the very pale flesh, uh, our first step is we are going to start off with a contrast apothecary white uh, in order to have that base. The one thing that I would highly recommend, especially with the white uh, contrast paint, is you make sure that it is shaken up well. So this has been sitting for probably two days since I last used it and you can see that there are a uh, the bunch of different layers of where the pigment at is at and most importantly most of your like whitish blue pigment is at the bottom so when you're shaking this you're gonna need more than just an initial uh, shake of the bottle because that white is still all there you want it to be more looking like a grayish rather than a white at the bottom so that way you know that your pigment is uh, fully and ready to be used. So we'll go ahead and get this shaken up and then we will go ahead and paint it onto our model. And now that that's all shooken up, now that it's more of a gray at, a bo at the bottom rather than that uh, bright blue, we are ready to uh, put this onto our model because we know that our pigments are fully shaped. Uh, so you're just gonna lather this all over wherever there's skin. Uh, you don't have to worry about getting too heavy. You don't have to worry about getting too light. Uh, this can go anywhere on that model. Once that contrast is dried, your next step is to just go ahead and add on a shade of Nun Oil all over where you put your contrast. And once that's dried, that will be the the last layer for this color skin. Uh, it's just I like using it as a nice contrast for metals. Um, this is what I use for the main skin of my Chaos Warriors, uh, the um, Never Chosen, under Cosmos Never Chosen. And there's a whole entire lore behind it where as they pledge themselves to him, their skin loses color because he starts draining their personality, things like that. Um, so that is uh, the two steps, three steps really, for uh, making this color skin. For this model, we are going to do another uh, pale white skin, but this time rather than using contrast, we're going to be using shades and layering. Uh, I typically use this tone for like vampires or anything that needs to be that pale aristocratic kind of look. Uh, the first undercoat is again a white. I use Wraith Bone White, but you can use whatever white you want. And then the next shade up is going to be a Reichlin Flesh Shade. So from that white, we're going to go ahead and go on to that Reichlin Flesh Shade. And our next step once that has dried is to use the layer pallid witch flesh and just start picking out the raised areas. You want to make sure that you keep that shading into the crevices, into the recesses, and use this to kind of pick out the higher areas. Okay. 
Um, I'm using a rather thin brush for this for control. Uh, you could also do it as a dry brush just specifically for this uh, color scheme. I just like painting it on in order to try and pull it out. Once you finish that step, the next thing that you can do is you can start adding another layer of white scar. Um, you would only want to do those on the very, very highlighted edges. Um, so anything like, at least for this skin, scars uh, or the ridge of the nose, the ridge of the face. Like I said, this is te uh, typically the color scheme that I use for my vampires. Um, just because vampires are typically a little bit more of just faces. Uh, and not too much ridge, uh, <laughs> ridge bodies, so it looks a little bit uh, funky on the back, but it's still good. It's still that kind of pallid f uh, flesh, that pallid uh, tone where it's a little bit more. It kind of uh, it's a little bit more uh, dead flesh, I guess. Um, but yeah, so that is uh, what I got. Um, for me right now, I'll be honest with you, for this model, I don't like the look of it with this flesh, but I'm still going to keep going because what I found, an important lesson that I've learned, is I usually don't feel like I've done well on a model until I finished painting that whole model. So I'm going to finish painting this whole thing, then I'll come back to see what it looks like. Sometimes when I'm midway through, I can easily get discouraged because it doesn't look like what I think it should look like. If you feel that way, um... I highly recommend pushing through, finishing the model, see if you still feel the same way when you are done. And for this skin tone, you are going to want to start off with a base coat of black. So this skin tone is a base coat of black. And then our Rhinox Hide is going to be our first layer. And once that color is dry, uh, the next stage is to be a dry brush of Scrag Brown. So we'll go ahead and dry brush Scrag Brown on top of them. Once your dry brush has gotten to a point of a little bit more dry, you're going to add a Seraphim Sepia onto the skin. Uh, we're going to be using washes to kind of uh, blend the pigments a little bit so that way it doesn't look as dry brush for skin but it looks a little bit more like a natural skin tone. The next shade that we're going to use once your Seraphim Sepi has dried is going to be Reichlin Flesh Shade, just to bring it all together. And once that's dry, you have a nice finished skin color. And for this skin tone, uh, we're going to want to change from a white base, uh, a white spray painted base, to a black spray painted base. Um, and then our first color that we'll be adding on will be Bugman's Glow. Once that skin is dry, our next step is to add a wash of Seraphim Sepia onto the whole skin. And the next color that you're going to add is a dry brush of Skag Brown. So Skag Brown dry brush and all over that. Mm -hmm. 
And once you got that dry brush down, the next level of color will be a Reichland Flesh Shade. And once that's dry, you have a nice new skin tone for your model. And what will be a first for my ping channel, um, as part of the skin tutorial, I'm actually going to do a skin uh, color scheme that I haven't tried out before. I've had this idea in my mind, but this will actually be the very first model that I paint in this color scheme. Um, the reason for that is I kind of just wanted to show off uh, the fact that sometimes when you get through your painting schemes you can either like it as you go through it or you can decide that you don't like it as you go through. Um, but it's good to take risks, it's good to try new things. So for this painting scheme uh, we're going to start off with a Sigor Brown. So our base is going to be Sigor Brown. Again this is on top of a white base coat. Now that our paint is done, uh, that's actually a pretty good skin tone in, its of its, in and of itself. So if that's a skin tone that you're kind of looking for, um, that was again our, um, I think, Gorgrunter fur. Let me find where I put it. Gilliman Flesh. Uh, Sigor Brown. So Sigor Brown is that color. But what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do a dye bur dry... Bleh. <laughs> What I'm going to do next is a dry brush of Tau Light Orchard just to bring the color out a little bit more and get those raised edges. A tip that I like to say when you are this early in the stage of painting is just do a quick dry brush on somewhere where you haven't painted. Make sure it's either going on as thick or as light as you want. And once that dry brushing is done, I'm going to go ahead and take a skeleton hoard and just add a layer of skeleton hoard on top to try and smooth everything together. We'll see how this turns out. And once that skeleton hoard is dry, you'll have a nice new skin tone. Um, I actually really liked how this one came out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep track of the colors that I used, uh, which was that Sigor Brown, Dry Brush Towel Light, and then Skeleton Hoard. I keep my painting palettes and my painting combinations just in a Google document. That way I always keep track of all the different types of colors that I use and I can return to them. I highly recommend it. Doesn't have to be super fancy. Doesn't have to be uh, super complicated. Just a Google Docs or some kind of um, journal or something. So overall, yeah, I like how this paint scheme came out. It was a good risk to take. Thank you very much. For watching again uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this this has been Nat Pammer's parental painting projects where we look at quick and easy ways to get paint onto your miniatures uh, we will end this video by just a quick look at other models that I've done using these skin tone techniques and we will see you uh, in our next video and remember, keep telling your stories. Mm -hmm.